I bought the Ubiquiti 7 Pro Max about a month ago when I had retested recently to see if maybe the multilink operation was finally enabled with the latest firmware update. And also because there was a very specific feature that could have an impact on the performance of the access point during my previous tests. And I realized I don't really like this access point very much, so let me convince you to either wait before getting the U7 Pro Max or skip it altogether. Reason number one. Where's the multilink operation? I know it hasn't been that much since the Wi-Fi 7 standard was launched, but Ubiquiti has been promising the multilink operation for a while now. Sure, the U7 Pro Max has been out for a bit more than a month, but the U7 Pro is on the market for far longer than that, and there are still no signs that things are progressing, as seen no specific deadline has been given. I noticed that Zyxer said that the multilink operation in standalone mode may be available in the third quarter of 2025. Yes. 2025. So perhaps that's when Ubiquity will make it available as well. Or maybe never. Who knows? This feature is very useful because it allows the aggregation of bandwidth across multiple radio bands, so we could see some very impressive throughput numbers. So it's a bit of a bummer that we haven't gotten it yet. Then again, it's worth checking out the price difference between non multilink operation and multilink operation enabled access points. It's quite steep. Reason number two. This one ties in with the first reason. So what do I do with multilink operation? Let's say we get multilink operation today and everyone cheers and is very happy, but what now? I have been trying to make multilink operation work on both Linux and Windows, tried experimental software and even went through three different Wi-Fi adapter brands. Yes, I used the Intel BE200 as well as the Qualcomm chip from MSI and even a MediaTek adapter and no good results so far. The throughput is all over the place, no stability and days of troubleshooting, which I'm sure no one from outside the tech enthusiast community is eager to go through. I know that Android is the most stable right now for Wi-Fi 7 and especially for multilink operation, but we do have laptops and PCs, and new phones are expensive while PCIe and regular M.2 chipsets are not. So the focus should be on upgrading old devices to support Wi-Fi 7 and not to get new ones that have it already integrated. Then again, things can get better with stable OS versions and better drives, but then again, they may not. It wouldn't be the first time the initial hardware is abandoned when the newer hardware is easier to work with and, well, it's bringing more money to the company. Reason number 3. The access point is too hot. I tested both the Ubiquiti U7 Pro and the U7 Pro Max, and while the former did well at keeping the temperature in check using its controversial fan, the U7 Pro Max is absolutely awful with its temperature management. Bear in mind that I got the U7 Pro Max directly from the Ubiquiti store, so it's not from some shady shop. I went fairly in depth when I did a teardown video of the U7 Pro Max, and then I even ran some tests with the case open which unfortunately did show a better performance. And I also included a video of the temperature that was registered with the latest set of tests that I ran. This access point is hot, not warm, hot. In order to handle it, I had to touch its plastic part to not get burns on my fingers. I also haven't once heard a fan spin inside the case, so maybe it's not working at all or maybe it waits until it reaches discoloration levels of heat to ramp up. But yeah, it's not good. Reason number 4. The fan. Let's get this out of the way quickly. I'm not against Ubiquiti adding a fan to help cool the case. What I am complaining about is the potential need for fan maintenance which does imply the need to open up the case. Have you ever opened a Ubiquiti access point case? I have, about 5 of them and they all have one thing in common. They're incredibly hard to open and it's pretty much impossible not to leave marks on the case. And yes, this does mean saying bye bye to the warranty. To anyone that may argue that there is no need to open the case at all and that the fan will not break, listen, it's a moving part and it can break easily, but even if it doesn't break, there's dust which can accumulate and cause thermal throttling. If you add a fan, you add an easy way to get to it without risking voiding the warranty. This is just common sense. Reason number 5. Wi-Fi 7 clients are still uncommon. This isn't only about the Ubiquiti U7 Pro Max, but for any other Wi-Fi 7 router and access point that was already on the market since last year. 
I have talked about mooting operation and the issues I had with various PCIe adapters, so it will take a long time until things get ironed out. It will probably take a year or even more. Also, there is the possibility that a lot of laptops will not be able to be upgraded to use the newer Wi-Fi 7 standard. So all that's left is to get new Wi-Fi 7 client devices, right? Yes, but they do cost a lot. In any case, I bet that when the Wi-Fi 7 clients finally start getting more widespread, we will get a new generation of access points which will be far more stable and with better support for the more advanced Wi-Fi 7 features. So there you have it. These are my 5 reasons to not get the Ubiquiti U7 Pro Max, at least for now. If the device gets improved, especially in terms of heat management, and if it receives the missing but promised features, then it can be a decent option because price-wise, it's still quite affordable when put next to other Wi-Fi 7 devices that do support multilink operation and the 6GHz radio. That's all for now, thank you for watching, and see you next time.